Hey guys, in the last video, I had set the scene with a bit of background information. Rest assured uses Groovy under the hood and that means we can use the Groovy syntax when writing our code and that gives us immense power. Groovy comes with a path expression language called GPath. Now Groovy closures harness real power for GPath in Rest Assured. Closers work just like Java 8 lambdas, which allows for the execution of anonymous block of code. Now this setup method is the boilerplate code you must have seen many times already if you have been following this series from very beginning. In this we are making a get request to fetch all the vehicles and we are storing the response in this response variable so that we can refer it in the different methods down below. So let me walk you through the endpoint we are going to use in this video. So I open Postman and here is the endpoint. I click on the send button and what you get back is the JSON response. And this is an object, okay? And in that you have this property vehicles, which is a JSON array, okay? Now this particular JSON array further contains these items which are JSON objects, all right? Let's take a quick look at some key methods we'll likely use with GPath in REST Assured. So the first method that we are going to learn is find, okay? Now find will return a single value that matches the closer predicate. So we have to write a GPath expression to find the type of vehicle with ID equal to one. Let's revisit our response. So we have this response, okay? Now this is my root element and this is the child or direct child of this root element, okay? So we have vehicles, which is a JSON array. And we are saying that we have to identify the type of the vehicle wherein the ID is equal to one, okay? So we can access this vehicle using this response.path, okay? And in here we have to say vehicle. Okay, in my last video, I explained that ideally that we start with root element followed by either dot or square bracket notations and then we provide the direct child. Okay, so we should have written like dollar dot vehicles, but you know, in rest assured, you don't need to provide the root element, you just provide the direct child. Okay, so therefore we are in here now. So this is going to return me what the list of vehicles. Okay, so let us store that in a variable. Now, we do not have any model created for this vehicle object, okay? So therefore, for now, we just say question mark, okay? And then the name of this variable would be vehicles, like so. And let us now print that onto the console. Let's see if we are able to first fetch all the vehicles. And there you go, okay? So this is ID1 and at the end we'll see ID4, okay? All right, this expression might be very complex, okay? But if you learn to break it down into smaller tasks, then it would be easier to build, okay? So therefore, to write this type of expression, you know, I have broken it down into three steps just to explain you, okay? So first step we have already done, okay? So we are able to extract all the vehicles. Now, step number two is, now let's filter down this JSON array. This is an array, right? This is a collection. Now you have to filter down this collection to only those vehicles, you know, which are public transport, okay? Let's see that. So we have all these vehicles in here, car, you have the property public transport, which is false, okay? Then you have bus for which the public prop transport is set to true. And for bike and private jet also, this public transport is false. So we have to retrieve bus from that list, okay? But this is going to give us the complete collection of vehicles. And if we want to filter down to the item that we are interested into, okay? We have to say fine. Now this fine methods comes from groovy and after this find method we have to put in these opening and closing curly brackets and within these opening and closing curly brackets we have to mention it now this it is a special variable which holds the current item of the loop okay in this case the current item is a json dictionary okay 
So when we say it, it is going to loop through this array and pick these objects one by one. So in the first run, it is going to pick this particular one, okay? And once you have access to this object, okay, you can easily access its property using the dot notation, isn't it? So therefore, we say dot and we use public transport, that is my property, okay, like this. So now, ideally, I should have said true, okay? You might be thinking about that. But the thing is, if, even if you don't provide this value, okay, it is still going to look out for only those items when the public transport is set to true, all right? Now, this particular expression is going to return me what? It is going to return me that particular object, that complete object, okay? Now that object has got key and value properties and now hash map in java allow us to store data in key value form and hence we store the output of this into hash map okay since we do not know the type of value we use question mark all right so let me just now comment the first one out save everything and let's see if we are able to retrieve the bus from that list There you go. So we are able to retrieve the bus from that collection. All right. Let me now comment this out. So in step three, now we have to find the type of vehicles with ID equal to one. Okay. So this much we have already covered. Okay. So it dot ID. Okay. Just like we did it dot transport. Now the ID has to be one. So these double equal to R operator so this stands for equals to operator okay we are saying that hey only look out for that item which has got the id equal to one but guys we also need to fetch the type okay so then since this will return me the object okay which object it is going to return me this first object okay this one now i have to access the type of it so it becomes very easy all i have to say is dot type okay and then this type what is the data type of this the data type of this is a string and hence i'm storing that in a string data type and just printing that to the console so let's save everything and execute it okay so we are going to see now car printed onto the console there you go so guys if there are multiple matches find method would always return the first match now in the second test case, we'll use Groovy's find all method to return a new collection with all the results that match the condition. Okay. So let me set it to false. My next test case will cover the find all. So let me enable this. All right. And we have to write the gpath expression to find type of all vehicles whose weight is lesser than 1500. We have got four vehicles, car, I think the weight is 1200 okay this qualifies then bus this is disqualified because it has got a weight of 10,000 then we have got bike again this qualifies and private jet disqualified all right so we should see car and bike in our response okay great so we have vehicles all right so then we use the find all which is going to return me the list okay now since we are returning the type of those vehicles okay so the type contains a string value and hence in here we have the string now let's focus on this vehicles dot find all just like we had find okay again opening and closing parentheses all right now this find all will iterate through the array item one by one so each item is an object all right great so far so we say it this will give me access to each and every item one by one then using dot notation i access the property on which i have to run this condition okay so i say it dot weight then less than is my operator and then this is my value okay this becomes my condition all right and this will give me all the vehicles okay objects wherein the weight is lesser than 1500 but hey i want to access the property the property type on this collection so therefore i say dot type and this is going to return me what it is going to return me a list of car and bike okay let me save this and execute it
there you go all right let me set it to false in the next test case we are going to make use of the max method to find the type of heaviest vehicles so how do we build this query so we start with vehicles okay then now we have to say max and we have to provide those opening and closing parentheses to access each item we say it we have to write the condition on the weight so i say weight okay and then we say okay hey give me the type so the heaviest one is private jet okay so let us enable this test save everything and execute it and there you go all right let me set it to false and move on to the next one and the next one we are going to find the minimum value okay so guys it's very simple replace this max with minimum so we are going to identify the lightest vehicle okay which should be bike let me set it to true and execute it There you go. All right, let's move on to the next one. Set it to false. Change the next one to true. And this time we have to write an expression to find the total weight of all the vehicles. All right. So what you can do, you can say vehicles dot sum. You also have the sum method. Okay. And then you say it dot weight. Okay. If you run this, you will get the weight. All right. So let me run this. And there you go. I hope this would be correct. Uh, guys, uh, we can also use this min, max, and sum in this particular way. Okay, what are we doing in here? So vehicles.findall will return you what? A collection. So you have a collection based on this criteria, and then you're performing the sum on that collection. Okay, so you can also use it like so. Now guys, you can also combine find and find all in your expressions. Here we are searching for all the vehicles with weight greater than 1500. And then from all the vehicles that are returned, we find the single vehicle because, you know, find method only returns one result. Now that single vehicle has to be a public transport. This is going to return me a collection of objects, which objects when the weight is greater than 1500. So from this this is one object okay and the bus is another object so you'll have an array which has got these two items okay so then you can use the find method okay on the find method now you say now iterate over those two objects okay and check for the public transport property and check if it is true and if it is true okay now this will give me what the bus object, the complete bus object, and then on that bus object, since an object, so you're using the dot notation and you're just typing the, uh, fetching the type of it, okay? So let me save it and execute it. There you go, all right? So you can also chain these find all and find method to write complex queries now let's set it to false and enable our next test case so guys if you want to do some transformation to each element of a list and collect the response in a new list you can use the collect method now here is the gpath expression to transform type of all private transport vehicles to uppercase okay so we are first finding all the vehicles and then change the collect method to transform all the types to uppercase okay very simple so let me just save it and execute it so we're going to exclude bus and now transform all the types to uppercases okay as you could see all right let me set it to false and enable my last test case
So guys, you can also use parameters in your expression to make them a bit easier to read. Okay, so we are finding the type of all vehicles whose weight is lesser than 1500, but we are using parameters this time. Okay, so this path method, as we have seen in the last video, could accept two string arguments. Okay, the first one is the path and second one is any parameter that you want to pass. So now we have seen that in this particular video, we can pass the gpath expression like so okay so we have seen vehicle find all it dot weight greater than this is the new thing okay so this far we have been providing the value in here but now we can supply the parameters from outside so i have this int weight is equal to 1500 so this particular variable is going to substitute this particular declaration okay but the thing is like i said both the argument of this path parameter out of type string so whatever value you have you have to make sure that you convert that to string first okay like i have done in here and then rest of the things are pretty simple straightforward and you can pass in multiple parameters so if you have a chained expression when you are using again some more condition so you can add more percentile s okay and then you keep on adding more values in here by adding these this comma okay so i hope that makes sense let me save it and execute it So we should see what car and bike. Okay. All right, guys, that's all from this video. I hope you like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.